And welcome to another one of our conversations here with Dan. Now, we've got kind of a touchy subject to, to discuss today, uh, but I think I'll introduce it this way. We can all pretty much agree that divorce is a major problem here in our nation and, and really around the world. Uh, and I think we could all agree that the Bible's intent for marriage and family is to make a lifelong commitment to work through this whole thing we call life. Yep. You know, once we do that. Uh, so the question that someone has sent in today is, let's say you've made that commitment, you've gotten married to someone, and for whatever the variety of reasons could be, your partner now comes to you seeking a divorce. And knowing what you've read in the Bible and the different things like that, you want to not divorce them. Is it more in line with the Bible to basically deny the legal divorce to your partner than to go ahead and have the divorce and move on with your life? Well, I feel like that that question probably comes out of a situation. It probably does. And, and each of us should know a situation before we give advice, but um, certainly in Scripture, um, you know, the Genesis, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cling to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. And Jesus concluded from that in Matthew 19, 6, he said, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was very strongly uh, teaching that when we marry, we should we should keep that covenant that we have with God and with our spouse and stay married. Yeah. Um, by the way, that conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees was based on a question which they asked in Matthew 19, and that was, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for every cause? And basically, the bottom line answer was, nope. <laughs> because Jesus' answer was, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Right. So that was the basic answer. However, we all know that sometimes people do what God does not want them to do. Absolutely. Um, sometimes a person can't control. Um, in fact, ultimately, we can never control what our spouse does. We can only control what we do. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, Scripture would, would indicate that we should do what we can to salvage marriage. Uh, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7, starting in verse 12, uh, Paul talked about people who were Christians who uh, were married to people who were not Christians. Mm -hmm. Probably some people in, in Corinth became Christians when their spouses did not become Christians. Yeah. And based on the Old Testament idea uh, in the Israelite community that they were not supposed to marry foreigners. It was unlawful for them to marry foreigners. Some Christians thought, they asked Paul, well, it should, do we have to get rid of our husband or wife mm. because they're not believers? Right. And about three or four times between 1 Corinthians 7, 12 and 7, uh, 16, he tells them, do not leave, do not leave, do not leave, do not leave. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them to work at keeping that marriage together. And the reason for it is in verse 16, if you'll read 7, 16 for us there. Sure. It says, how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? All right. So the idea is don't, don't leave. Hang in there. You might end up converting that person and find a unity that you never had before mm -hmm. in your marriage. Another passage I think that informs the question just a little bit is 1 Peter chapter 3, where he's talking to wives who are married to difficult husbands, unbelieving husbands. Mm. Read, read the first uh, couple of verses there. Okay, it says, Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. And when you see the purity and reverence, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. All right, so um, he, he's telling them to, um, to 
continue to live a good life and gain and earn the respect of their husbands and maybe they'll be won over eventually. Again, the implication is to stay with them, mm -hmm. to uh, try to weather the storms and, and to win them over gradually through your conduct. Yeah. Now, sometimes an unbeliever will just leave or somebody will get it in their head that they're going to leave and there's nothing you can do about it. They're just going to leave. Sure. And 1 Corinthians 7 verse 15 uh, addresses that. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 15. It says, But if the unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. The word bound there means enslaved. It's the, it's the Greek word doulao, like doulos. It means a slave. Mm. So what he's saying is a brother or sister is not enslaved to that unbelieving husband and wife. Mm. In other words, if it's either do the spouse's will or Jesus's will, Jesus is our master, not that spouse. Amen. And if they say, we're going to leave if you don't do, if you don't go to the idol's temple with me, if you don't do the stuff that pagans do, then they'll just have to leave because we're the slaves of Christ, not the slaves of the unbeliever. Now, um, so, so sometimes we can't help it. This is bottom line. If a spouse leaves us against our will, we can't help that. Uh, for this reason, and a lot of reasons, there are many single people that are running around, divorced people, whose spouses have left them for one reason or another. And those people really need the love and care and ministry of the church. They need to be accepted in the church. It's not a sin to be a single person who has been divorced. If you go back to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 11, mm -hmm. he's talking to married people who um, may, in fact, separate against God's will. What does he say there? 1 Corinthians 7, verse 11. It says, But if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. All right, so... If they split up, he says, remain unmarried or be reconciled. But in that unmarried state, uh, she or he can still be a Christian and they can still be accepted by the church. And even though they don't have their spouse, they're not second-class citizens. And we should involve them and embrace them and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, then you get into the whole business, which is the most hairy part of this. Mm. Harry, I'm looking I, at I, no, never mind. I, yeah. <laughs> and, and I was looking at his beard. But anyway, it's the most hairy part of this, and that is about the remarriage. See, mm -hmm. that's where it really gets thorny. Yeah. And, uh, you know. And maybe that's a lot of discussion for, for another time. Yeah. So, but, but for this question, you know, it's like, so in the case of the believer and the unbeliever who have been married, and the unbeliever leaves or, or whatever, you know, it's like, okay, we let them go. Now let's say they serve us papers. You what know. can you do? Yeah. So it's not, a, again, it's not going to be a sin for me to to go ahead and go, okay, I guess it's over. The, the, the sin is not, the sin is, is not in, in what somebody else does to you in leaving you. Mm -hmm. That's not your sin. Um, divorce is something God hates, but if you try to do what you can to keep the marriage together and your partner doesn't want the marriage, I mean, it takes two to be married, right? Yeah. So God is not going to hold you accountable for, for that divorce, I mean, as far as sin, because he says clearly you can remain unmarried. That's okay with God. Yeah. So the divorce is not the problem. The problem comes... Uh, now, now, don't misunderstand what I mean by that. Divorce is a problem. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you can't help it and your spouse leaves, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. your problem. Yeah. But there certainly are pitfalls in, in the life of a single who is not married. And uh, relationships, a lot of them want to involve sex, and that's not sanctioned outside of marriage. So single people have a tough way to go there. And then there's a lot of pitfalls involved in remarriage because of what God says about that. But you're not bad just because you've gone through a divorce. I mean, you, you've 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 got perfect 
uh, hope and right to be a Christian and to live as a Christian and to serve God and try to be a good part of the church. And there are many wonderful divorced single people that uh, we need to really embrace that mm-hmm. way. So yeah. anyway, that's... Yeah, and, and like we said in the beginning, there's probably some story behind this question that we may yes. not be aware of. And each situation has its own situation. So Absolutely. And so maybe you've got a situation that you want addressed, that you're looking for help. You know, whether we can answer that, you know, publicly or privately, if that's something. Right. Or if you're needing a direction on, you know, some counseling to reach out to. You know, yes. Let us know that, too, and we can point you in those directions as well. And, and by the way, I, I'm certainly not a marriage counselor. Um, we have other counselors um, that we can go to. But anytime you sit down with a couple who's having issues and they're even talking about divorce, the crucial question in that in that encounter is with each partner, do you want to make this marriage work? Absolutely. And with the other one, do you want to make this marriage work? And if one of the partners does not want the marriage and they're bent on that, then you're spinning your wheels in marriage counseling. They have to come to repentance in their heart, come to a change in their heart, really realize that they want to work on the marriage or you're you're doomed. You can't you can't do any good in yeah. Marriage counseling, unless they both want to save yeah. the marriage. Again, it takes both people That's to make right. a successful marriage. That's right. So so hopefully that kind of gives you some direction to go in, uh, gives some things to think about. And like we say, if there's anything specifically you want addressed in your own situations, we can discuss those publicly or privately and help you get the help you need in making some of those decisions. So thanks again for the question. We hope you all have a great week. We'll see you next time.